Hey guys, it's Kelly. Welcome back. I have changed my mind about quite a few makeup products. This doesn't happen very often because I usually make sure I take a really long time to thoroughly test out a product before I review it with you guys for this exact reason. However, sometimes just as life goes on, my opinion on something might change and that's why I like having this series where I come back on camera and tell you guys about any specific products that I have changed my mind about. Some of these are for better, some of these are for worse. If you are new here, hello, my name is Kelly. I upload four videos every single week, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. I would love to see you again, and let's go ahead and hop into the products. Let's actually start off with the only real non-makeup product. Well, there's one skincare product, but most of these are makeup, and this is a hair care product that I gave a really bad review to, but I feel like I can see its purpose now. So this is from the brand Moroccan Oil. This is their Beach Wave Mousse. So they say it's sea salt free for tousled texture. That's exactly what it does. I have this in my very, very messy hair today. I was trying something. I don't know how I feel about it. Half of me loves it, half of me absolutely hates it, but that's okay. So I actually really enjoy using mousse on my hair, especially the days that I'm blow drying my hair because I feel like it helps me get a little bit more volume. And the first few times I tried this, I was expecting it to perform more like a traditional mousse, but it's definitely more for that like textured effect. So I could see this being really great for someone that has naturally curly hair. I do not. I tried to trick you into thinking I did today, but my hair is naturally straight. But for like a PC textured look, you might really like this. I do think it's one of those products you're either gonna love or hate, not a ton of in between, just because it has such a uh, like firm hold to it. It's gonna be a little crunchy. It's definitely not a touchable experience, but if you want that really intense hold and you wanna get a lot of beachy texture out of your hair, this is pretty effective at doing that. So I'm gonna take my negative opinion back. I think that this serves a pretty cool purpose, but just know it's different than a traditional mousse. Okay, Bite Beauty Mascara. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. What is the official name of this? The Upswing Mascara. When I reviewed this, I told you guys that it was just okay, it was nothing special, but I actually think it's a pretty good mascara. Granted, it's a very pricey mascara, so you know, I expect it to do a ton, but this has just gotten better and better and better over the lifespan of me owning it. And I feel like mascara is typically like that. The first couple days are not the prime of the mascara. It's usually about a week in, so I always wait minimum a week to review a mascara. And that's what I did with this one as well, but I feel like this one really hit its prime like two to three weeks in. And now I'm so impressed. I've been getting so many comments saying, what mascara are you wearing? I'm wearing it today, however, don't be fooled. I have on uh, three individual lashes on the outer corner of each eye, so don't be fooled. It is not all this, but this has grown on me so much. It's very lengthening, and it's more volumizing than I originally thought. So I think it does a little bit of both, lots of great length, and even though it is such a pricey mascara when compared even to other high-end mascaras, this is lasting me so long. Normally by this point, I feel like the tube would start feeling a little bit light. You know, when I would get ready, I would notice it's running out, but that's not the case with this. I feel like I could use this for months out and still have plenty of product. Okay, time for a negative mind change. Something that I thought I liked more, but ugh, just, I don't love these. So these are the lip liners from Nabla. They came out with their nude lip liner collection last fall. The ones I'm holding are nude two and three. Love the color range. And when I originally reviewed these, I said they were just okay. And I've come to the conclusion that I actually don't like these that much. I find them a little bit too creamy for a lip liner. Now that is gonna be personal preference. Maybe you're listening to this and you're like, wait a minute, that's right up my alley. And it could be, but for me, I feel like I can't get the precise line that I want and I feel like they look a little bit messy. Also, I feel like they're almost hard to sharpen because they're so creamy. I can never get them to return to that really great sharp point. I don't think they're complete duds. They're not the worst lip liners I've ever tried. I'm not gonna get rid of them. 
but when I use these up, I'm not gonna run out and buy more. And out of my entire lip liner collection, they are my least favorites. And it's like, you know, they're high-end lip liners. Maybe if it was a drugstore price tag, but for this price, girl, buy the Milani wooden lip liners. They're 10 times better. This brow little duo, dual ended product from elf this is not new this has been around forever this is the elf clear brow and lash mascara so dual ended like i said one side is supposed to be for brows one side is supposed to be for lashes when i first got this i was not a fan and i feel like i just threw it in the bottom of my makeup bag and did not use it for months because this gives you crispy brow effect so again that's not going to be for everyone if you like a soft touchable brow skip this this holds them in place, locks them in place like super hold hairspray. Which for myself, I don't have a lot of eyebrow hair naturally, so when I put my eyebrow hair into place, I really need it to stay there to help with the illusion that I have eyebrows, you know what I'm saying? And this does that. I've been liking the effect so much recently that I've been using this every single day instead of the soap brow technique. And if something has made me replace soap brows, I mean, that's a great product. So I mostly use the end that's for brows, but I feel like I'm gonna be out of this soon and I might just use the side for lashes. I feel like they're not that different. I've also used this to lay down like little flyaways. So if I'm doing a ponytail and I have a little, some pieces coming out, I take the mascara side and I just slick it down and I think it works pretty well for that also. Only thing I wanna note, the finish is a little bit shiny. It's not matte like some other brow gels, so that might be a pro or con to you, but hey, this is $2, you guys. I'm so happy that I love it now. A negative mind change. A negative mind change? Does that make sense? This is from Ciate London. This is their dewy stick. So this is a highlight. Now, it's actually a really cool product, and I don't think, my opinion hasn't changed to the point where I'm like, oh, it's a total fail, avoid it. But I just feel like there's a time and a place for this, and is a bit finicky to use with a majority of products. So, like I said, it's a highlighter stick. It's actually really cool because it's a clear balm. So this would work for any skin tone, and it doesn't give like a shiny reflective look. It's a balm, so it just looks like your skin is dewy. So honestly, very on trend with the current makeup style, but this is a product that's gonna be best applied on kind of a no makeup day, where you're not wearing a lot of product. If you do foundation and you've got a lot of other products going on, you try to apply this, it can pick up products underneath it. I just feel like it's harder to use than a lot of cream products. So I find myself only using this on days when I'm really not wearing foundation or even blush just to get like something on the tops of my cheekbones. So maybe if that's you and you don't wear a lot of makeup every day but you still wanna be like a glowy goddess, you could actually love this. But I kinda wanna retract my recommendation of it just because it's been kinda difficult for me to use. The last few times I've tried to use it, I feel like I either love the effect or I'm disappointed with it. So it's just, it's hard to use properly. The biggest turnaround out of this entire video is actually this brush from Persona Cosmetics. Persona Cosmetics, I'm so sorry because when I reviewed this, I put it in my just okay category. I was like, I don't think it's gonna become a staple brush for me. I don't love the sizes. I cannot think of a single day that I have not used this brush in months, you guys. It went from being a brush I said I'd probably not use that often to one that I can't do my makeup without. So definitely needed to be included in this video. This is from Persona Cosmetics. It's their dual-ended face brush. One side is for blush and one side is for highlight. Okay, the reason I didn't think this was gonna be for me is because neither of these are the sizes that I was previously using for those products. So for blush, this was way smaller than most of my blush brushes. However, I've come to realize this is actually my preferred size for a blush brush. For the highlighter side, this was way bigger and fluffier than I was usually using for highlight. However, now that I'm into a more subtle highlight, this gives me the perfect effect, whereas my older, my other highlighter brushes that are a bit more firm, they give me too much highlight. That's not what I want anymore. So this, I cannot do my makeup without this. And at first I was like, you know, I don't like dual-ended brushes. 
I usually don't, but something about this, it's so easy because when I do blush and bronzer, I kind of go back, or not blush and bronzer, blush and highlight, I go back and forth, back and forth. I'll do a little bit of blush, then I'll blend out the highlight, then I'll flip it over, blend out the brush. I go back and forth a little bit so that they kind of blend into each other as opposed to like blush, streak of highlight, you know, we don't want that. So the fact that this is dual ended just makes my life so much easier. I can't do my makeup without this, so I'm sorry Persona Cosmetics, that brush was genius and you actually changed the way that I apply my makeup and the brushes I use for it. So I recommend that one very highly. Okay, let's talk sunscreen. I'm obsessed with sunscreen. I don't use the word obsessed lightly, but sunscreen is so important. I love, I mean, I apply it every single day. I reapply it. I talk about it often. And whenever people would ask me, how do you reapply your sunscreen throughout the day? I would get so excited to talk about this. This is from Derma E. Totally love Derma E. But this is their Sun Protection Mineral Powder SPF 30. Really cool concept. Now, they're not the only brand that makes this, but this is the one that I have. So it's a brush and then it has sunscreen powder at the bottom. Now I would never recommend a product like this as your only form of sun protection. Still apply your sunscreen in the morning. But something like this is really cool to have in your purse to touch up. The reason I'm having to retract my recommendation, this just stopped working. And I don't, I don't mean the sunscreen because I don't, I don't know if that's working. I'm just hoping that it is. But something happened where the product does not come out. I can shake this for eternity and nothing is coming down. The only way I can get it out is to unscrew the bottom and dip into it and that makes the absolute biggest mess. So the packaging is just really faulty. Also the cap won't ever stay on. It stopped being able to stay on so then it opens up in my purse. Probably a good thing that no sunscreen comes out anymore because otherwise I would have a mess in my purse. But this packaging is just so disappointing that I don't really recommend this exact one anymore. And maybe I got a dud and something broke in it and it doesn't work anymore, but I recommend this type of product, but this one is really hard for me to use at this point, so don't recommend this exact one. Okay, this next one is a, I halfway change my opinion, halfway don't. Does that count? So these are from Becca. These are the Light Gleam Primer and Topper Liquid Eyeshadows. I gave these a pretty bad review. And I still stand by them not really working as they're intended to work, especially the matte side, patchy, messy, and I get creasing out of these. But I've actually been using the glitter topper in a lot of my looks recently, so I felt like I just had to come on here and mention that. And I'm actually wearing it today. Today I'm wearing the new Sigma 9 Pan Palette, the one in Ivy. I shared those over on my Instagram and I asked you guys which one you wanted to see a look with. Almost every single comment was for Ivy. So I did a look today just for fun for me to test it out and then I'm going to film a look for my Instagram. So if you're not following me over there, shameless plug. Before today's look, I'm wearing Ivy and then I took this one. This one is called Dusk and I took the glitter topper shade and just put a little bit over top. And I still think these glitter toppers are a little bit dry, they don't look that smooth, but they're such beautiful shadows, super shimmery, they've got really cool flips to them, and they don't have a full opacity to them, so they are such cool topper shadows. So I've actually been using these on the top. So. I wanted to mention that, like I said, still don't really recommend them the way they're intended to be used, but now that Becca's going out of business, if you can find these on sale at TJ Maxx or somewhere on a discount, the topper shadows are really, really, really pretty. Have you guys tried any of these? Let me know your thoughts down below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in my next one. Bye.